Hello everybody and thanks for tuning in. In this video we're going to be breaking down a solution to one of the QHack 2022 coding challenge problems. If you have any questions about the, the content in this video at all, please leave them in the comments down below and we'll be sure to have a team member answer them uh, in a timely fashion. Without further ado, uh, let's get into the content of this video. There were five categories in this year's coding challenges. Uh, we're going to start with the quantum chemistry category, and in particular, the hardest question in that category, which received a lot of good feedback, um, called Mind the Gap. Um, before we get any further, I just thought I'd talk a little bit about myself here. Uh, my name is Isaac DeVlute. Uh, I did a master's degree in physics at the University of Waterloo, and I studied uh, condensed matter physics, Rydberg atoms in particular, and I did some generative modeling. Uh, I actually studied under uh, Roger Melko, who presented at QHack, which was kind of cool. Um, I joined Xanadu pretty much right after I finished in December of 2021. And uh, just a fun fact about myself, I have two standard poodles below. Look at them. They're so cute. Um, their names are Murray and Evelyn. Okay, so on to the content of this video, which is all about the 500 level QChem question called Mind the Gap. Um, and just before we get into the coding part, um, there's some prerequisites that you should probably uh, know of or have installed uh, before you attempt this question. Uh, first off, all of QHack was pinned at Penny Lane version 0.21, so please make sure that if you're replicating any of this code locally that you have that version of Penny Lane. To attempt this question, you should have a basic understanding of circuit construction and optimization in Penny Lane. You should be able to answer what is variational quantum eigen solving, or VQE. You should have at least some familiarity with the fact that electronic structure Hamiltonians describing molecular orbitals uh, can be mapped to qubits. So we can do quantum chemistry on uh, quantum computing hardware. And this isn't super important, but how to create sensible onsatses in any variational quantum eigen solving routine is really, really helpful. Uh, so we'll get into more of that later, but that's not super needed, but it's, it's, it's nice to have that bit of knowledge going into this question. And without further ado, let's get into some code. So in the mind the gap problem, what we were essentially asking you to do was given the qubit Hamiltonian describing the hydrogen molecule at a particular H to H uh, distance, you were asked to calculate the ground state energy and ground state itself uh, by way of VQE. So you had to code up a, a ground state VQE um, routine using the uh, qubit Hamiltonian that was generated for you in this block. So you needed to populate this function ground state VQE, which we'll get to in a second. And then we gave you in the problem statement some sufficient theoretical background in order to create this operator H1. We called it H1 in the problem statement. And what H1 is, is essentially an operator whose lowest energy eigenstate is no longer the ground state of the hydrogen molecule, it's the first excited state. So you would leverage the information you obtained in your ground state VQE calculation to create this H1 operator, and then further do another VQE calculation with this new H1 operator to obtain the first excited state energy. And then we just asked you to print out the uh, ground state energy you calculated in your ground state VQE routine, and this excited state energy that you calculate in your excited state routine. And we'll just go through each of these functions um, individually. These are the three functions you needed to populate yourself. So let's just go through these in the order that they appear in this main block. So in the ground state VQE function, all you needed as input was the Hamiltonian that was calculated for you in the main block. And again, you just needed to output the ground state energy and the ground state calculated in this routine in order to leverage that for the creation of this H1 operator later. So it's very standard, and um, honestly, there's a lot here from our um, our VQE demo for the, hyd the hydrogen molecule, and there's a link to that in the description below. So there's nothing crazy going on here or anything. Um, to start with just a standard definition of a device here. You don't need to use anything fancy. The default qubit device will work just fine. And it ends up being for this particular Hamiltonian describing the hydrogen molecule, we only need four qubits or wires. Now next I want to define a function that is my onsatz for my VQE routine. So it just takes in one tunable parameter called theta, and I initialize uh, my circuit in this state 1100, which um, it's a little, it's good to always have some intuition as to what's going on from a chemistry perspective because we have this mapping to qubits. So what this 1100 state means is that there are two electrons in the first molecular orbital 
one spin up and one spin down, and no electrons in the second molecular orbital. Now, anything in quantum chemistry needs to preserve the number of particles, essentially. So we need to only put unitaries in our onsets that will conserve the number of particles, or the number of electrons in this case. So what this means from a qubit perspective is that whatever state I initialize my circuit in, its Hamming weight cannot change. So there's a, a class of, of unitary operations that do this for me called Gibbons rotations, and I'm using a double excitation Gibbons rotation uh, as my only unitary in my entire circuit. And it takes in this angle theta that we input in this function, and the state that it creates is a superposition between the initial state we started our circuit in with both electrons in the first molecular orbital and another state with both electrons in the second molecular orbital. Okay, so this is my onsets here. Now there's two quantum functions I want to build from this onsets. The first one and most important one for VQE being the cost function, which is just the energy expectation value. So just uh, QML.exp val of the Hamiltonian that's input into the ground state VQE function. And then lastly, we asked you to calculate the ground state itself. So I need another quantum function that will calculate the ground state in the computational basis. So I just call QML.state. And then the, the last thing in this function that we need is to actually do the VQE routine. So it's an optimization procedure. I need an optimizer. I'm just going to use the op atom optimizer here with a step size of 0 0.1. Uh, it worked well for me in practice. Um, you can use other optimizers, I'm sure, but this one seemed to work just fine. I'm going to initialize my angle theta. That's the parameter that gets changed in the, in the optimization process um, to 0. And then I'm going to perform 500 optimization steps by calling op.step and cost. Um, and at each step, it's calculating a new angle and the ground state energy. 500 seemed to be enough, and it seemed to, to, to run in a good amount of time as well. And finally, after that finishes, I'm just passing out the uh, ground state energy that results after the 500 uh, iterations and the ground state itself using the optimized angle theta. The next thing we asked you to do was to create this H1 operator here. So I copy pasted my code from my correct solution in here. And essentially we need to calculate uh, uh, two things. The first one being this, this ground state projector term that, that came up in the problem statement. This is the thing that gets added to the molecular hydrogen Hamiltonian that essentially projects out the ground state such that the new lowest energy eigenstate is the first excited state. So essentially it's just an outer product of the ground state and uh, its, its conjugated form. And remember we're passing in the ground state from our ground state VQE calculation along with this parameter beta. This parameter beta is associated as a coefficient of this ground state projector term. Essentially it's just a number that's larger than the uh, ground state to excited state gap. Now this creates a matrix and I need to add it to the molecular hydrogen Hamiltonian. Now the molecular hydrogen Hamiltonian as it is when it's passed into this function is just a collection of like poly words and coefficients. It's not a matrix. So I need to make it into a matrix. And so I just define a new variable called hmat and I call a function in the QML utils a module called sparse Hamiltonian. And this makes a sparse matrix representation of the Hamiltonian. I need a fully dense matrix. So I, I just uh, call too dense after that to make it a regular matrix. And I'm just doing exactly what the problem statement tells me to do algebraically. And then we just need to do the excited state VQE, which is going to be very similar to the ground state VQE, but just a little different in that the onsets will be slightly different. All right, and here we are. Um, as with the ground state VQE function, all we need as input is the Hamiltonian and everything else gets defined in this scope. Next, we need to define our onsets. So this is where a little bit of intuition as to how the onsets uh, should look will greatly help you do this problem. Um, again, we need unitaries in a circuit that are going to preserve particle numbers. So we need to have given sortations. Um, instead of double excitation given sortations, I'm going to use single excitation given sortations. I'm still starting in the same basis state, so it's two electrons in the first molecular orbital spin up and spin down. And I'm, I'm being hand wavy with the coefficients here, but essentially after each application of these single excitation uh, gates, I'm forming a superposition 
of, of this original state that I input or initialized my circuit in with electrons in the first molecular orbital spin up and spin down and an electron in the second molecular orbital spin up and spin down. Same as before, we need a cost function, which is a quantum function. It just ends up being the um, QML.exp_val of this new operator, H1. And now we just play the same game. And let's just see this in action quickly. I'm gonna run this code. All right, and that ran in good time. Um, we have our ground state being about minus 1.14. And as expected, our first excited state is a little higher, um, which is minus 0 0.478. So that'll about do it for this video. If you do have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. We'd love to hear from you and, and answer your questions for sure. Um, as well as any links that I mentioned or forgot to mention in this video, they'll be in the description for this video. And thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you in the next one.